Hey guys, this isn't complete, but uh, just wanted to uh, talk about one of my little uh, failures last night, and and why I'm I'm one I'm trying to learn how to garden, and I'm trying to learn aquaponics, and uh, and apply some of the things that I know I've learned in being an, an IT programmer, and uh, you know I guess they call them professionals, or they call us professionals. I think that's actually pretty hilarious because you know. You know the whole unlearning monoculture. This monoculture of, of getting a job and working at one skill for your entire life is uh, is, is a whole other topic. But anyway, in, in my monoculture approach, my approach to this monoculture was to become a programmer. And uh, what I want to do is in, in unlearning this monoculture and you know learning skills to to fend for myself and fend for my family instead of relying on um, all the different programs the government puts together to try to take care of us with infrastructure like power and water and uh, all sorts of things that I call welfare. And uh, uh, that's a whole other video. I won't go down there. But uh, that's what I, I did in my monoculture um, lifestyle. I was an IT programmer, still am. But uh, I want to put all sorts of automation and monitoring and garden systems in, in my system and, you know, try to share anything that I know. And hopefully you guys who know how to garden and know aquaponics can share with me with, with what you know. And, uh, you know, maybe we can get somewhere uh, in, in unlearning monoculture. But anyway, uh, this is roughly one of my systems. Uh, this, this is the, basically the garage system. So, you know, within the garage system you have a pond and there's a large koi pond you guys have seen. And effectively what happens is water comes in uh, into this swirl filter here. And I wonder if I could use a cursor. I, the guys, is my first time doing this, so I apologize. that I, I'm very low tech and I'm trying to uh, demonstrate what I'm doing and, and what's working and what's failing. And uh, hopefully this, you can see the cursor well. But anyway, water comes in here from the koi pond. It just overflows into the swirl filter. Water enters on the bottom, swirls up to the top while the poop stays on the bottom, and it fills into this sump right here. And down here is where the big 3,000 gallon per hour pump sits, and it basically pumps water to the top of the system, and well, actually pumps it all the way to the top, but it feeds down everywhere else. So it pumps all the way up, I guess about 14 feet, which is why I needed a 3,000 gallon per hour pump. And it feeds down from that 14 feet down into these raft systems inside the sun porch into a floating, I'm sorry, into floating raft systems down into the media system and drains back down into the sump. And on the other side, similar, you know, the pump pumps to the highest elevation. Uh, but this one here is in 14 feet. This is probably about uh, seven or eight feet at the, within the garage. And it feeds everything that needs it in the garage. And so it feeds down here into the solar heater. Uh, and it feeds down, and you know, it goes down around and feeds into this media bed. It also feeds down into these raft systems, uh, as well as it feeds down the overflow into the koi pond. Actually, over here is the rocket mass heater. I didn't draw that in here yet. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get all this in here and make it look neat. Um, eventually, this will be a, a web page where I've got all my monitoring and temperatures and all that great stuff. But uh, just for the sake of demonstration, so I went out... Uh, and found a failure in the system. I heard the uh, the pump down here in this system grinding and gurgling, so it was uh, it wasn't doing so well. What happened is right here. Uh, and, and and piecing this all together really fast, some of the PVC I didn't use cement on, um, thinking I might rip some of it out and change a few parts here and there. I think most of it is cemented, but some of it's not. This is all an experiment for me. I'm just learning. And uh, unfortunately, what happened? was uh, the feed to the solar heater broke and when it broke or when it slipped out water started spraying down all over you know the garage floor uh, I don't really know why it didn't uh, totally drain the system um, it has a the way everything's designed it potentially could have drained the entire system it didn't do that and the only reason that makes sense to me is, I mean, this was a T section. Somehow water wasn't, uh, uh, either it was flowing fast enough or flowing down around the size of the T. The T wasn't, you know, directly uh, underneath 
and so some of the water was actually allowed to go down through the rest of the system so it didn't just totally spill on the floor um, and so all the water didn't spill out the system all the water can't spill out the system it can it can drain the it can stop the media beds from filling because the water stops coming in all the raft systems are have levels so those will never drain the pond has a level so it'll never drain but it certainly could have stopped the feeds to the media beds and so um, water spilled down of course I got a good chance to taste some water but I, anyway <laughs> Corey water is delicious I wanted to just kind of you know show you guys this is roughly what my system looks like I have to finish it up but that was uh, the failure from the morning so a little bit on tweaking a bell siphon sen sensor so it's a tilt sensor it's on the bottom of this little uh, flippy floppy dolly type deal and uh, what happens is when the water starts to shut off which it does now the, the flap goes back to being equalized and horizontal so the flow of the water just pushes the tilt up and what I have on the back there she goes right there what I have on the back as you can see to make sure she comes down right are split shots and they weigh it down so that ensures these little guys fishing fishing weights I don't know if you can see that with the light with these little fishing weights so what you do is I just took them and I clamped them on the back and uh, now she's horizontal so the sensor should have shut off the next time she starts the water will rush down the front push the tilt that way and tilt sensor goes off and that way I know when my bell siphon is starting and when it's stopping okay thanks for watching hey guys real quick just uh, a quick little update here so we had a uh, massive failure last night and uh, well let's I, I take that back it wasn't a massive failure woke up went into the garage checked the uh, aquaponics because I from the um, the sun porch I could hear the uh, the pump my, my big pump. I got a uh, 3,000 gallon per hour pump that pumps water around the system and when it starts gurgling when it starts getting oxygen from the sump you can hear it grinding and gurling and making all kinds of noises so uh, just before it burns out and dies the good thing is I, I kinda have some fail safe so it wouldn't burn out um, which uh, keeps a little bit of water trickling into the sump so the sump didn't did the sump pump didn't burn out it's not a sump pump but it's a magnetic pump um, but what did happen is it stopped circulating water throughout the system so you know, walk into the garage we've got water spouting down from PVC from uh, from a higher place where the uh, water pumps up to which uh, totally stopped the the siphon um, from working on the higher system the higher portion of the system in the sun porch and the garage system uh, also shut down but what I wanted to show you real quick is uh, so part of what I'm doing is I'm trying to use monitoring uh, as a way of alerting you when there's a problem with your your system as well as uh, letting you know how well things are working so the good thing is going through the system I, I can see what happened throughout the night and so Every time the siphon stops and starts, it it uh, it makes a, 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 a uh, an entry into the database, and so throughout the night, it uh, it ran and ran and ran, and, and uh, going back through the data, I can see uh, where it failed. So the sensor's not perfect just yet. There are some false positives in there where it, it doesn't uh, it misses the siphon because the siphon drains and. I think it's a it, it's right around a minute and I'm checking the siphon status right around a minute so I'll, I'll, I'll probably switch that to 30 seconds but anyway so uh, what I have here is there's roughly 12 minutes between all the siphon stopping and starting uh, or actually between it between it starting if I kind of remove that one I think that's a false positive there's another false positive here but what I can see is down here between 328 and 408 um, is when the failure occurred and so the good thing I can see is that so uh, um, the plants only went without water for for less than an hour so in reality just before I caught the failure is is when the failure occurred so 
thinking that it might have been something massive and really it was just something minor but it could have been a huge issue so uh, just you know those are two good reasons why why I'm trying to do that and take an approach to monitoring to understand your system is one to understand what happens when something happens how long the problem occurred for um, as well as I can put an alerting now which will alert me so when the bell siphon fails to run maybe after two cycles it can send me a text page so that's what I'm working on um, so today I gotta take uh, gotta put another fail safe in for uh, uh, where the problem occurred and then I have to put in some alerting to let me know when it doesn't run so anyway just uh, uh, two cents on that my failure and learning from uh, monitoring your system and, and what you can do so I'd, I'd highly recommend you guys take a look at doing some sort of monitoring of your systems there are a lot of systems out there you can buy that are prepackaged or you can do what I'm doing just using a uh, microcontroller called Arduino to uh, put in different monitoring systems uh, or, or sensors to monitor things throughout the night but uh, anyway that's that thanks for watching